forget. And we need to record it for who? Uh, Shauna? Shauna, and I guess also we'll show it to our shop guys. Yeah. Tony and Don. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, because really what I've got this one mounted up. It was kind of, it's kind of a, it was a tough one to get going because it's such a short stroke. Um, and there's a little change I'll probably make at some point on the bracket, but it works pretty good. I'm very happy with it. Uh, but wanted to just kind of go over it with you, let you see it work. Because this, just like the other ones we've done um, before, you know, they were a little bit larger. This is the smallest one we've done. I, I, do they go any smaller than this? Half inch. Half inch. But I don't think you'll have a lot of those in Winston. No, no. Most of One, the most of the automated valves I sell or diaphragm valves are anywhere from one inch to four inch. Okay, so, yeah, because this one inch, this is on the ragged edge of what we'll be able to do, because just because of the you'll when I turn it around, you'll be able to see on the back side that when we when we talk about linear mounting, we always talk about one dimension is called the CC dimension. Okay. The, C, the CC dimension is is it's the different distance of the center line of the spindle of the positioner to the center line of what your take up takeoff point is. I'll turn it around kind of so you can see it. Let's see if I can if you can see what she zooms in here. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell just because it's such a small deal, but so if you notice that we have a carrier pin, I don't know if a little bit of light's gonna help. Too much lighting along. So the CC dimension I'm talking about is the center line of the spindle on the positioner itself, and then the center line of this takeoff that's on the center line of this of the automation pin that's on this thing. So what you have to do is for 30 degrees of stroke, you find out what your stroke length is, but to get 30 degrees of rotation, you'll multiply that stroke length by 1.87. Um, and on this one, it's about as close as we can possibly get because physically there becomes an interference point in here. Um, on this one, I got it to work, but this is we we probably couldn't do a half inch with a with a with that analog product. So we probably have to go to digital to get to that um, on this specifically on this unit. But I'll, I'll one of the things I had to do when I designed the bracket is if you notice the bracket slotted right and left right here. That is yeah. so you can adjust that CC dimension. Uh, the way we did the pickup point on the stem, so this one has the six millimeter stem that we had to thread into the top of the actuator on the piston. Uh, what we were able to do is we have an adjustment height wise because that's not fixed. That's got a set screw that holds it in place. So when we put these pieces in. Uh, so what we do is we get that set the ideally what we'll do is we'll put a regulator on, we'll run this to 50% of stroke, middle of stroke, make sure this arm's perpendicular or parallel to this plane. So it'll be perpendicular to the valve stem. And then we can set this height. Then we can come in and we can set our CC dimension by moving our valve in and out to get to that correct CC, or our positioner on the bracket in and out to get the correct CC. So I got a question. I'm got sorry, Dan. That's I fine. got a question. So on that bracket and coupling, what mm -hmm. or that bracket, what was <laughs> it what was it that had a commonality with the intrinsically safe bracket? Um the, the bracket itself, just this bracket, this bracket is the same. I actually didn't have to redesign it. Um okay. so it's the same as the other two sizes, the bracket itself. The one thing that changes is this little takeoff. This one has a six mil. This so this size and a couple of the others. I'd have to look at it. I don't have it off top. I can't remember off the top of my head. But some of the larger sizes, this pin goes from six millimeters to eight millimeters, and that's the only sure. thing that really changes is this takeoff right here. But everything oh. else, all the other componentry, stays the same. So it's kind of the same, the same process. That you know, once you get the valve, once the valve's a little larger, has a little longer stroke, what you end up doing. Is this CC dimension starts getting longer, so the, the position will actually slide over on that bracket to get that CC dimension correct. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go over this one a little bit, show you guys how it operates, kind of show it in action. I don't know if you guys got to see, uh, Winston, did you get to see any of the other ones that we'd sent over? No. Okay. I did not, I did not. I'm not sure <coughs> Chris did. Uh, I know Chris is the one that kind of 
pioneered that whole project or that whole experiment, but I did not get to see them after they were made. Yeah, we, I think we got three different sizes here in house and we're able to design the brackets off of those. And then I think you guys had an order for like five or six and then that those actually, I never touched. I've just sent them directly to y'all and you guys mounted them. So I don't know, I, I never got any questions as to if there was any issues or not. So I guess it worked out pretty well. I guess so. Uh, I didn't get any feedback. What about you, Chris? I saw, I actually saw some that were built and um, Tony's just, um, Tony Beard and he's just amazing. I mean, if you give him the proper, basically the kits, he's going to make sure it works. And that was my thing. Once you build that up, you still have to make sure it's class six. So I'm not sure. I really didn't talk to him about the final testing once everything's assembled. Uh, and I know it's a control valve, but it's going to have to be, if it's a fail closed valve and still needs to be able Correct. to be for API 598, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's just quite a mouse trap, And I would say it's above my aptitude level to be able to build something like that. Hopefully I can start selling them, but I wouldn't want to mess with it. I wouldn't want to mess with it. Yeah. Um, I know, I think I talked to Jose the other day, or Friday. We started kind of working one where we're, he's looking at doing a couple more. Um, but it's got an intrinsic safety requirement and some other issues that we may go away from the, I think Randy's what we talked about going away, trying to go maybe away from the 200 to the 400 so we could get the intrinsic safety easily without having to add, because if you notice on a package this small, if we went to the third party mounting, which I don't know if I have one in here, I don't think I do, but if I had third party mounting, we're gonna have another device mounted out here on a pretty yeah. small bracket. Yeah, that's so, insane. And, it, and it's really, for the price, it's about the same. I mean, it's, I think it's a little bit more to go digital, um, but he's wanting a, a positioner IS with four to 20 feedback. And, and our feedback is only general purpose. So if we had that, we it just would be a lot easier to go with the D400. Yeah, and Smaller footprint and look better. Yeah, the, and generally, whenever you go to the D400, the only real drawback on the D400s is if you get the giant actuators, is its air delivery is a good bit lower than what the V200. But the V200 has a, you know, it delivers a lot of air, so that becomes a problem when you have tiny actuators. So going to a digital on a smaller actuator like the half inch size wouldn't be a problem as far as you, you'd never see anything performance wise, no issues. Um, it'd just be a because, like I said, the CC dimension, I, you can't physically, basically at some point, the, 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 the pickup point and the center line of the spindle would have to intersect, you know, and two things can't occupy the same space. So we just yeah. physically can't do it. And, and typically we run into issues on the V200. When we go below a half inch, we, we have some linearity issues and that and exactly what Scott's talking about. It, it, it becomes an issue and it, it's, it, it's very difficult to also calibrate uh, an analog product at that small of a stroke. Mm. And this one really is where, we're, we're, <laughs> this is as fine as you can get on this on this size on the one inch to get an analog product to work because it is, I think I am like 0. 0.37 inches a stroke. So it's tiny, it's very little stroke, which we'll, I'll go ahead and stroke it so you guys can kind of see what's happening with it. Yeah. Well, like I said, the, the, the important thing was when I started that I have, when we designed the bracket, we designed enough flexibility. Luckily, the way this design, this drives, uh, I had to pull the indicator. I think when we got this, it didn't have the actual automation package. It was just a little plastic indicator inside. We had to remove it, and you guys sent me the bracket and all the, the correct mounting for automation, or actually for... Yeah. Uh, like limit, you know, they use it for limit switches and other stuff too. But once I got it and installed it, I could kind of start building. But luckily, with like I said, with this this takeoff point being set screwed on, I can write, raise it or lower it as needed. Pretty easy. Uh, like I said, what I did on this one, there's a couple ways to do it. You can either set the valve, just put a regulator on, and stroke it to where you're at 50 percent of stroke. And what you'll have to do to know that is you'll just have to measure this at closed and then put air on it, measure it fully open, and then use a regulator to get in between where it's about 
and you can set this and this arm perpendicular and tighten everything down that way. Or you can actually let it relax to its relaxed position and see, and you can kind of cheat and rotate your valve. You can turn it to where it's about 15 degrees down. Now this one, I did it at 50% because it's so close. The ones that you can kind of cheat going 15 degrees, that's generally only when you have plenty of adjustment. This one is really close because it's such a short stroke. But we'll, we'll stroke this thing and see if you guys, we'll show the front and back. You see it good? You guys yep. see? Uh, I'll leave the arrow on it for a minute and I'll take it off so you can see what's happening inside and then we'll turn it around and see the back side of it. All right, so we're at four milliamps, so 12 milliamps, and then 20 milliamps. I don't know what their general, I don't know what they're going to be using this for, um, but you notice that this thing, if you'll notice, you see it move and then come back and hunts a little bit. Not hunts, it overshoots and comes overshoots. back. That's a, that's a six milliamp jump. All right. Or actually, eight milliamp jump. You're not going to see, you shouldn't see an eight milliamp condition change in normal operation. And that's the reason why, because it's moving so far so fast. So if we just ramp it up, so we're at 12 milliamps now, and if we just ramp it one milliamp at a time, you'll see that it moves free and smooth. But uh, you'll see, I'm gonna take this off, I don't know if you'll be able to see. So does that, is that arrow gonna be accurate for the mm -hmm. position? Cause it yeah, looks like it, a so, really small stroke. Yeah, it's only 30 degrees. I mean, it's still 30 degrees, so we have a zero to 100% scale. Oh, but, I see it. So if you notice on there, you can see it that it is graduated, but that's normal for us. Anything less than two inches, two inches and down, we use a 30 degree cover, okay. a 30 degree mylar and have the cam scale for 30 degrees. So that's one thing we kind of talked about the other day that looking at you guys and what y'all inventory, yeah. basically the only thing y'all have gotten so far is uh, for 90 degree stuff, rotary stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a couple little changes you can do a spindle a cam and a mylar, and you can make the inventory you have you use it with linear stuff. Mm -hmm. We're we're also going to be aiming to start doing the stainless steel gauges. I think that's a no-brainer. Chris told me about the adder. Mm -hmm. That was nothing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that I think that one. I think Chris and I kind of determined looking at the pictures. It did look like the ones on the the one you and I looked at, Chris. That was going to be a standard gauges. So if you yeah, we should. We, we shouldn't even, I, I don't know, it's just ridiculous. We shouldn't even buy, we, we should only buy the stainless gauge, period, in my opinion. You got a stainless steel valve, a non-metallic actuator, a coated position, <laughs> and then a, the crappiest gauge available on the market. That oh, yeah. There, I, it, and, it's and just going to, once it rains three times, the gauge is rusted, you know. Oh, yeah. We've, we've kitted several times that these, you know, those standard gauges are obviously high-quality precision test gauges. <laughs> So what are those uh, standard gauges made of? Aluminum or? No, they're what? steel. Um, they got the, the housing is steel that's painted black and the bezel I think is chrome. It's chrome bezel and it has a plastic lens where when you get into the stainless, it's 100% stainless. It's a stainless bezel, stainless housing, stainless wetted parts, and it has a polycarbonate uh, lens. Yeah, The only enough. thing not stainless I think is the arrow. The little pointer is is aluminum. Okay. Yeah, Chris and I got a laugh from that picture the other day. Well, at least <laughs> I did. I it may have frustrated Chris a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so All good. So you'll notice. I, I don't know if you'll be able to. T you guys will be able to tell. Maybe you notice that this arm is a little bit on a decline. So that's at four milliamps. So as we increase, as I increase to about 12 milliamps, you'll see now that it's parallel. Well, it's hard to tell just because the angle of the lamp, the camera, but it's about pretty much parallel to the body of the positioner and it's perpendicular to this slot. What so are you at right now? Hmm? What are you at right 12 now? milliamps, so it's mid-stroke. Mid-stroke. So so as we go up to 20, you'll notice that it came up. It's up about 15 degrees. So that's our 50 degree, our 30 degrees of travel. And like I said, the one, the one thing, I don't know if we're going to be able to show it, but if you'll notice 
inside of here, this is our takeoff point that's coming off of this spindle or off the main shaft of the actuator. And this is our CC dimension. And if you'll notice as I stroke, it doesn't change much. And at mid stroke is at 12 milliamps right there. That's as close as we can get with this one. I mean, I, technically I could probably get a little closer, but that's a lot of force and a lot of, at, I mean, a lot of force on this little six millimeter shaft. So anything, anything we do otherwise, uh, I'd really, definitely on a half inch, we'd have to go to digital just as a, just because physically we can't get that to happen with this position. Okay. We're all having to rely on that geometry of that CC dimension. All right. Is all that stuff uh, 316, Scott, or the set screws might be 304, I guess? Um, it's, I'm going to say it's most, it's probably 304. I'm yeah. pretty sure of this. I'll have to double check, but I think that, yeah, this is all 304, which we could do 316, I'm sure, with the bracket manufacturer and bolts and all, but it's just, you know, it's going to be more cost, but we could, something we could look at if we need to. Yeah, we don't know what it's going to end up living like, so yeah. So, so I was just curious, because uh, they're actually, Winston's, uh, the end user where this is going to, even though the bottom, the, the body of the valve is 316, they still want us to paint it, so that tells oh. you the type of atmosphere they have. That valve will end up being uh, snow white, you know, okay. to be painted white. So, yeah, uh, we'll get you a nice pretty picture after it's done. Yeah, please do. Yeah, that'd be great. It'd be good to see a finished product. Um, yeah, I mean, really, guys, that's kind of what I wanted to go over and show you guys that and kind of talk about what we have on this particular one. Everything we've talked about is going to apply to the larger valves too, with the exception of how tight this CC dimension is. Uh, the larger ones, obviously, like I said. The bracket will, you know, this will come up or down depending on how it sets up exactly where this fell up or fell down, where the spindle gets mounted or the takeoff point gets mounted on this arm. And then the CC dimensions, all that will change on the larger stuff. But as far as functionality, it's going to function the same way. Well, it looks good, guys. I mean, it's a lot better than the last setup I had with the YRC. I mean, that thing was just... I won't even open up that can of worms, but <laughs> it, it, it looks really good. Um, so. Well, one thing you'll notice that we still have some adjustment on the span in here, that it's not bottom down on the span adjustment right so in this I, area. I want to know, like Chris said, is it full seat still at, uh, at I guess, four milliamps? Yeah, at so four, four milliamps. So I didn't do, okay, so these, these specifically on these diaphragm style valves with these, these are pistons in here. A lot of people think they're, um, they're diaphragm actuators, yeah. but they're, it's a piston, just like any, most other actuators. It's really sensitive. So it's hard. I mean, even, even you know, you can calibrate the gauges, but it's really tricky. You really kind of have to cap, calibrate these to feel kind of that whenever this thing is at four milliamps, it has no pressure on the, the output of the positioner. So, yeah. The spring, if the spring can't open it with the positioner, I mean, if the spring can't close it with the positioner off of it, then it wouldn't close it with the positioner on it. You know what I mean? Does that right. make sense? That yeah. I'm not, it's it's completely relying on the spring to close it because gotcha. we don't, we're not using that second port just because of the way the actuator is. Um, I guess you're, you might be able to double like uh, tube it on this yeah, side, on, on these actuators. How often do y'all do fell open or do you have you ever? Uh, most of mine are fail closed. I think I've done a handful of fail open. So it's a, it's a possibility that we could now, I don't know how well this top seals, how they, how this goes together because there's not really a seal in that nut that holds the bracket down. There's no seal there. So if you put air on the top side, I'm sure it'd leak out. Maybe they have an option for whenever you're using a fail open that it's O ringed or something. But this one is just threaded together, so I don't, I you know, I don't know what their provision is. I don't, I'm not super familiar. I've used these guys a couple of times in the past, these GF valves, but I don't know for sure how they sure. how they accommodate double acting or seals because that's that would seem odd that they'd have a different mounting kit or different hardware for double acting versus single acting on the mounting. Well, basically, what you're saying though is the closed position. 
that's all going to be uh, whatever the factory sends us. It's going to be up to them to make sure that travel stop was set correctly and that valve is going to close where it needs to close. The position right. is not going to affect that. So yeah, the position. Yeah, as yeah. long as if it if it before you put a positioner on it, if it closes fine, then once mm -hmm. you put the positioner on it, as long as you calibrate your zero properly, as long as you're not uh, don't have it calibrated where it's tending to open, it's going to function properly. It's going to close as, right. as well as it can. And whether that seals or not. I don't know. That's all nice. <laughs> well, it's a diaphragm valve. They usually seal pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Scott, you... is this Teflon yeah. line? So it's Teflon diaphragm and with a rubber, uh, with a rubber actual sealing diaphragm for the air. Correct. You have a PFA line body, and then you have okay. a mod modified uh, Teflon diaphragm PTSD. and an EPDM cushion. So the cushion, the wet, everything wetted is going to be the PTFE or TFM. And then the air is hitting uh, EPDM cushion. Okay. Yeah. 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 I see the tab for both, and I didn't wasn't for sure what yeah. I, I didn't really pay attention to what it said on the body as to what it is, but so PFA. But yeah, I mean it's. Well, that looks awesome. Yeah. You do good work, Scott. I well, appreciate it. We try. Yeah. Um, uh, is that going to ship out today? What time was it? Yeah, we should be able to get it out today. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to kind of was going to talk about with you guys on this was part of the reason why this bracket's so long. Ideally, I'd like this distance here to be shorter. I'd like this to be moved back towards the center line of the valve more. But the problem is with where our calibration port is on the larger size valves, you see right now that's the smallest diaphragm you've got. On the larger diaphragm, it's putting us where I'm sitting at. You can't access the, the calibration port. So that's why we had to push this bracket out kind of like we did. Yeah, you don't want four brackets for four diameters. So. Right, and, and so that puts a little stress on this bracket. Um, I, there's one thing I'm probably going to change on it. I'm going to put a longer, I have a D4 spindle that's a little different, but I can pull out here, this is a standard thing. That'll actually put a little less force on this because everything's so levered out, but it, it, it works good. There's just some little fine tuning I want to do in the future, but it, it works great the way it is. So I'm not worried about it. It's just trying to make sure that it's, best as it can be well it looks good guys thank y'all so much um thanks scott so, i had nothing to do with this <laughs> <laughs> so going forward uh if we order this correctly the first time around what what kind of turnaround time is it two weeks three weeks what well no see looking now what we can do i mean if this is something you guys are looking like it's going to be we can bring the brackets in we can have some, we can put a couple in inventory. Looking I'll at, be honest with you, it won't be that many for the one inch. Uh, I, I think these would be more of an as needed basis. I feel like uh, it's going to be the bigger valves more often. Yeah, so I, what I'll have to do is I'll look and, and I'm, I'll, be, I'll look at what we've made in the past, how many different kits we've done. I think we've done. If I'm not mistaken, we've done, was it two, one and a half? And there's three sizes I know we've done before this. I had three valves in house and none of them were this small though. So Chris, I'll look at those. It should, should have been uh, three inch for sure, two inch for sure. And if you hadn't done a one yet, it had to be an inch and a half. So I think that maybe it was a three, two and a one and a half. So I've got those brackets done and it's the same bracket. Like I said, the only thing that changes is this coupler. So what we'll do, what we do in house is we bring in two components. We'll bring in this as one component, this and as another. And then when we send them to you, we just send mix, mix and match parts to get you where you, what you're using. Mm -hmm. But this, like I said, this is going to be the same as the inch and a half as far as components. It's just the setup's a little different, and that's all. I mean, that's any linear valve is when you change sizes and stroke lengths, the setup's a little different, even if components are the same. It's it's very similar to our uh, back linear kit that we have that we've built in adjustment in and out and up and down. And the reason, the way we have the up and down is because the way that this is mounted on this stem and then we have the, the right and left adjustable because the slots in the bracket. This bracket will fit every one I've done so far. It's the same bracket. So I haven't changed that. So every one, the, the four or three inch we had and this one inch have the same bracket. I think the inch and a half uses this same six millimeter Holt bore coupler where the three inch and the two inch, I think use an eight millimeter bore coupler. So if the four inch comes about, 
there's some things we can test, we can check, and it may be that we really don't have to get one in-house that working with your guys there in the shop that we might be able to make the changes we need and see what we can, what we have to do. That way we don't have to ship them back and forth. And we're so close now, we, we've learned so much with the ones we've had in-house. Well, yeah, um, kind of like Chris said, though, that, that that part about moving forward and stocking brackets is mm -hmm. kind of above our pay grade. That'd be Jerry Fanner right there. But yeah, as far as that goes, if we know if it's something that's going to look like you, you guys are going to end up doing some numbers on, I mean, we can bring a couple in. Now, I don't, you know, we're not going to bring 20 brackets in because they're kind of weird and specialized. I mean, how often do you think you'd ever sell 20 at a time, you know? Not very often. But we could bring a couple in and have them in house ready to go for you guys that we could turn. So we wouldn't have to wait that three week turnaround for my bracket manufacturer to put them in production and put them in his, you know, his schedule and get them done. We could have some in house. And that wouldn't be a problem at all because. Like I said, the only things I have, I farm out, we keep the linear arm in stock, a couple of other pieces that the guy, my bracket guy makes for me, but it's it's pretty simple. It's straightforward stuff, but it's something we could definitely put a couple in inventory here. That way you wouldn't have to wait four weeks. All right. Yeah. And, and it, it wouldn't and have it, to wait on the turnaround also for me to mount it, check it. So we're past that point now. And it won't, it won't really make sense, Winston, for them to keep them until Jerry can commit to keeping – the actual George Fisher setup, you know, in Stafford, which I think yeah. he's close. I think he's Yeah, close. we're working on it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, All right. Uh, well, uh, Vincent, thank uh, you for letting us see your wardrobe, man. Next time, maybe you could wear one of those nice lacy shirts. Yeah, or something. you like that? You like that? Thing? I was waiting for somebody to make a comment. <laughs> yeah. I was like, are you a TJ Maxx, Winston? No, no. Uh, my wife, uh, so – I had an office, it was my man cave, and uh, my wife's pregnant with our second child. We're in a three bedroom house, so that third bedroom is now a nursery. So I have been moved to a little back room uh, that's part of my garage, uh, <laughs> and it's also my wife's overflow for the closet. She's got like the rack here. I mean, y'all yeah, so. are married. Y'all know what it is. Oh, like yeah. That's why we're busting your balls, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The man cave uh, served its purpose, and now you're in the closet. Exactly. I, this is where I belong, I guess. So he's got to pay for the babies now. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, um, guys, uh, thank y'all so much. Uh, looks pretty uh, dead nuts on. Um, I'd say that, <laughs> and uh, it looks good. And uh, if y'all could uh, please try and ship it today, that'd be great. Because it is like I think it's like five weeks late now. So, and it's yeah. not y'all's fault. It's well, I'm gonna back up a little bit, and something we definitely need to get. Make sure we get with your guys there in house on as uh -huh. to you know. Like you, like you kind of referred to Winston earlier, that when when this originally got ordered, there was some confusion as to what bracket is what and what part was what. So looking at this, this is just a general purpose unit. So this bracket is going to be a part number. Like, I think it's three five zero three three eight or something like that. There's a three five zero three seven or three five zero one seven one, which is the replacement cover. Because I know one of our previous quotes, we quoted some is or EX, EX switches or mounting a third party switch on it. And there's, I guess that got confused as to the new cover plate, this plate, this mounting kit versus this mounting kit. So anytime yeah. you order one of these, you need a GF valve and you need a positioner. It has to have that. It's an expensive bracket because of the low quantity and it's, it's, uh, it's not super complicated, but it's more complicated than most of our brackets because we have a couple of different things and slots cut, but that more expensive bracket is the one to use because the, the set, what is it, Randy? Would we say 75 or $80, whatever the 350171 is? Yeah, that, 85. Like I, like I said, that's just, it's a replacement cover. Basically, it's a replacement cover, another plate for mounting that switch outside of the positioner. Yeah, that was a, things. that was an oversight. Inside sales had basically duplicated an order when this, when this, purchase order came in for a control valve she just went back and duplicated in order not knowing that this one didn't need to be in is so yeah, that's so, where so, yeah so yeah so we'll just this is something i mean I, i'm 
just trying to help you guys on, on those in the future. If yeah. they got any questions and, and just, just give us a call. Give me a call. Give Randy a call. We can help y'all make sure, make you guys, help you guys make sure that you, you got what you need on there that we don't kind of get short on something like we do on this one. All right. Hey, okay. real quick, before we hop off, do you have any more nickel-coated uh, V200s on hand? I think we do. Can you go look real quick, Charlie? Hold on a second. I'll let you know how many we got. Yeah, I'm fixing to get an order for one more. I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we do, but let me double check. Let me – Carly's going to go look for me real quick. Are y'all getting some more of those uh, tough and coated ones pretty soon? <sighs> Randy? Uh, probably it's <laughs> it's you probably gonna a, be you give him a purchase order. Yeah, it, it's probably gonna be mid June by the time we get those. Uh, right now, air freight is just crazy expensive, so we've so we're trying uh, sea freight. So that adds on about four weeks instead of a week delivery. Um, so right now we do have something that's on the water coming to us, but it does not have the tough room in it. And it was already delayed. So I'm just being, I'm just trying to be as open as I possibly can be. It's supposed to ship out of Sweden, uh, middle of May. So on the boat. I would on put four weeks on that at least by oh, the time we get it. So yes, right. Winston, we do have nickel on the shelf, like 14 units right now on the shelf. Okay. All right. I'm fixing to get an order for just one more, but okay. they're asking me about the tough from COVID and, I wasn't aware, so. Um, well, like I said, uh, did we, have we got rid of all those? All we've got left the, is the ones with the plug. Yeah, so we yeah. got the screw, like we talked about the other day, that's all yeah. we have right now is the, the one with the additional plug, the, the better plugs. Right. So we're, it's not right. the push-in stuff, so. Yeah. Winston, I don't know if you've ever seen it. They got a really cool uh, product called Flex Seal. You can actually, you, you can <laughs> actually waterproof the bottom of a boat. <laughs> And then the guy floats down. So you could flex seal that V200 and they'll never know it's not tough. You do, you do live in Lake Charles, don't you, Chris? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Better than that, I live in Salford. So, oh, damn. Yeah. On the other side of the river. Very creative. So, well, gentlemen, thank y'all for your time. Yeah, not a problem. So you guys oh, no got, I mean, if you got any questions. All right. Good. Good. Can y'all send the recording to, uh, I guess, to me, Chris, and Jerry? And yeah, we'll I'll, I'll just upload it to YouTube. I, it, the file's okay. probably going to be huge, so I'll just yeah, upload it to YouTube, and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank y'all very much, and uh, 